Church family, special friends and guests that are joining us in this midweek Bible time. I trust and pray as we come this evening to share the Word of God, that we come expecting something. I believe for myself, throughout the entire audience that will partake of this message, it has something to say to all of us. The wonder of God is He can take one message and direct it to every single individual that hears it, giving them their special need. Why? Because He's God. God said, My words shall profit where I send it. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your thoughts. They're higher than yours. It always amazes me how that as a pastor, I will preach a message. And in the comments that I get back from those that were there, their interpretation or application, some part of that message will be completely different. Not the entire message, but there'll be a significant part of that message that God used to direct to their heart that message he had. And so I want to encourage you. I want you to pay special attention to each and every message because God has something that he wants you to know that can benefit your life, can establish your relationship with him, or point out something that you need. Why? Because God loves you. He's your heavenly father if you've been saved. If you've not been saved, he wants to be your heavenly father. And he will speak to you through this message, your need of salvation. He will point to you that sin and iniquity separates you and him. But he being a righteous judge and have to have a payment paid for that and remove that enmity that was between you and him, Christ willingly came to be the sacrifice. And God's love was proved when the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What a tremendous verse that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's who God is. He's a God of love. Now he's a righteous judge. If you reject his payment for sin, then you must pay for your sin and the payment you have to pay is you have no righteousness, so you'll be separated from God and you'll spend eternity in hell. Not because you were predestinated to, but because you willfully rejected. Because he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So listen to me. Then child of God, you as a child of God have a unique privilege and that's what I want to share with you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me uh, to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. And I want to speak to you this evening on the message I've entitled, The High Calling of Serving Jesus Christ. The High Calling of Serving Jesus Christ. Do you know, dear friend, if you're a believer... There'll be no privilege to equal the privilege that God will offer you of serving Him. No matter what God allows you to achieve in this world, what heights you might obtain, what acclimates you may receive, how much wealth you may accumulate, do you know there's no greater privilege than being a servant of Jesus Christ. The thing that has stuck within my heart over the years, when we look at Job, people identify Job, of course, with his suffering, and that's true. But they also magnify him being a man of the East, which represent in, in uh, respect, in authority, in wealth, we know he was quite a wealthy man. He was a well-versed man. He was a well-respected man. But there was something that God said that caught my heart. And it was something that I, that I pray for. 
that, that when God looks at me, he might say the same thing. We would laud his accomplishments and his wealth and, and all of his social standing. But here's what captured my heart. He said to Satan, has thou considered Job my servant? Wow. Wow. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, every born again child of God has that same opportunity and privilege to be referred to by God as my servant. Can you? Can you imagine the joy of one day being able to stand before Jesus Christ because of the free pardon of sin and to hear him say, my servant, my servant, my servant, no greater, no greater thing, I believe honestly, that could come from the lips of my Savior when it concerns you or me than my servant. Notice what Paul said about the high calling of serving God through Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Jesus. And that's one of the, that's one of the things that God says that he's planned and purpose for believers is to have the mind of Christ, to be conformed to his image. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, detailing that he is God. He didn't become God at his birth. He took on a robe of flesh. He became a man. He became a man, but he didn't cease to be God. He didn't become God. He was always God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning. Notice that. But made himself of no reputation. Oh, listen. Made himself of no reputation. What does that mean? He took the role of a servant. Look at it. And took upon him the form of a servant. Oh, listen. Listen, and was made in the likeness of man. He became incarnate. He became man. He was as much man as though he'd never been God. He was as much man as any man that's upon this face of the earth, except he was without sin. Look at it. Look at it. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You know, in the garden, we're reminded where he said, if so, this cup can pass, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. You see, the will of a servant is to serve the master according to the master's desire, according to the master's will, according to the master's plan and purpose, completely and totally in obedience, not questioning, not rebelling, but completely and totally. That's why the Father said there in the transfiguration when He said, Behold my Son. Look at it. He was well pleased in the Son because He was a servant. Look at it. The Bible said in being found in fashion as a man, He on Himself became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that very tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Father, help us. Help us today to share the word of God in power and demonstration of the Spirit. To see every believer, every believer, be able to understand the privilege of being a servant of our Savior. No privilege ever given to a human being, no matter what the acclimate might turn out to be or, or the position it might be in or the notoriety or the reputation it might produce. Nothing, nothing can equal the opportunity that God has given every believer, every believer, the opportunity 
to serve Him where they are, who they are, what they have for the glory of God. Help that burn within our soul, stir our heart, and bring humility upon us, Lord, because you would even trust us or give us that privilege. Help us not to fail you. But if we do stump our toe, let us fall upon our face quickly and ask you to forgive us. That's why Paul said, I bring my body into subjection, subjection lest by any means after I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. Every Christian should so treasure that opportunity of service that they'll pay attention, that they not forfeit that, that they not throw it away, that they not give it up by disobedience. Father, help us now in this message and we'll give you glory for it. If that one also under the sound of my voice knows not Christ, Holy Spirit, convict their heart. Holy Spirit, give them clear understanding of who Jesus is, what he's done and what he wants to do for them. Give them the courage to acknowledge their sin, repent of it, call upon Christ and be born again. And we'll praise you because we ask it in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen. Notice what he said. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. This is the foundation of true humility in service. But made himself of no reputation. We're not to serve the Lord for what we can get out of it. We're to serve the Lord for what we can contribute to the cause of Christ. We're to serve the Lord so that we can glorify Him, that we can lift Him up. We're reminded of what John the Baptist said. He said, I must decrease, but He must increase. And John said, I'm not even worthy to unlatch the sandals on His feet, and neither are we. We're nowhere, even as a child of God, we're nowhere ever, ever without the Holy Spirit and the grace of God even even be thought to serve him we're not in it for what we can get shame on us shame on us if we're serving the Lord for what we might get out of it shame on us if we're following the Lord because we like to be identified with him because it makes us good listen to me Listen to me. Notice what he said. And took upon him the form of a servant. A servant is one that accounts the obedience to his master or her master to be unquestionable. To be unquestionable. To count it a privilege. And to understand how dare me that I would contest with him. I would question him. I would rebel against him after all he's done to secure my salvation. Oh, listen to us, ladies and gentlemen. We owe a debt to Jesus Christ. We can never pay and thank God he doesn't require it because we'd not be able. But he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. God said, I want you to be conformed to the image of my son. I want you to have the mind of Christ. And all God asks us to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to serve Him, to follow Him, to let Him use us to bring glory to God and to lift up Christ and to give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to work. Look what He said. We need to remember what Jesus told His disciples when it comes to stewardship. No, when it comes to servants. And listen to me. God help us not to be jealous one of another are to be in contest with one another. Jesus explains very plain the type of servant we ought to be. Matthew 20, verse 26 through 28, turn in your Bible. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister, and that word is servant. Minister literally means servant. Servant. You won't 
the favor of God in the sense of well done, thou good and faithful servant. Look at it. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Let him be your servant. You know how, how you're truly blessed? Not only is it a blessing to serve the Lord, but the Lord said there's a, there's a blessing that you, you, you can't imagine unless you accept the challenge of God. And I want to challenge you just to pause for a moment. If your heart's right with God, you know what Jesus meant when he said this. It's more blessed to give than to receive. When your heart's right and God gives you that special opportunity to be a blessing to somebody in his name. To show forth his grace and goodness that's been bestowed upon you and share with somebody else. It gives you a sense of love and completion that you do not get anywhere else. It thrills your heart to know that God will let you share and demonstrate his goodness in your life, in his provision in your life with somebody else. To see that smile come upon their face. To see that tear swell up in their eye. To see that gratitude that's in their face while they might not even be able to say nothing about it. Oh, next to salvation, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a servant's heart, God will touch you in a way that I cannot explain. It has to be experienced. Oh, I'm thinking often when Jesus reminds me, it is more blessed. It is more complete. It is more fulfilled. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Oh, listen to me. And God wants us. By the way, servanthood is the only way to grow in grace. There's no other way. There's no other way. You learn to appreciate the grace of God by sharing it. You learn to appreciate what God has given you by sharing it. You learn to enjoy instead of harbor or put aside and I'm not meaning that you don't need anything put aside, but I mean if you're living only for yourself, you're not a happy believer. You're not a fulfilled believer. Oh, you've been washed in the blood of Jesus. You've been saved. You're going to heaven. But you're missing a contentment. What do you think Paul said? I count all things as done that I might win Christ. The greatest privilege of being a servant is you get to share what God is doing in your life as a testimony with those that likewise will take that and share that with somebody else. Giving. Giving grows. Yes, it does. Cast your bread up on the water and it'll return back to you. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You might not think it, but it is. And that will spread and spread and spread. Notice what he said. The Bible said very plainly, being a servant is the work of every believer. Well, now I'm not a preacher. I'm not a missionary. No, but you're a child of God. What about a mom or dad in a home? What about a son or daughter in a home for a mom and dad that needs to come to Christ? What about driving a truck? What about being in a doctor's office as a doctor? It don't matter no difference where you are. A servant is one that can serve Christ regardless of where they are. Don't use that excuse. Don't use that excuse and rob you of some of the choice blessings of God by saying, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not called to preach. No, but you're called to testify. You're called to share Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And when you got saved, you received the Holy Ghost. All incomplete. Shall be witness of 
unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice that. Notice that. I don't care. Some of the most influential sharing of the knowledge of Christ, His grace and goodness is given the opportunity of mom and dad. Mom and dad have the greatest influence to start out a child's life. And what a golden opportunity to show them the grace of God and to teach them to share it and to teach them it's more blessed to give than to receive. One of the conditions of this world is that we've raised a generation that's selfish and self-centered. We've robbed them. We've robbed them. We stole some of the joy that they had coming to them in learning to be that servant of Jesus Christ. And the way you prosper is to use what you have. Remember when they said increase our faith? He said use what you got. Use what you got. Do you know if you're a believer, you've got all the faith that you need. All you need to do is start using it so God can show you how to use it and it can grow. What a shame. What a shame. We have robbed this generation of what liberty and giving and sharing. You see, one of the greatest proofs of true love is giving. Now you can give without loving, but you can't really love without giving. Because God Himself proves that. He said, I love you. But if it had been nothing to follow up, then it would have been nothing but words. You see, real love has the desire, the longing to meet that need of those that they love. What do you think? What do you think the sacrifice that some parents are willing to make for their children, even to die in their own selves? Why? Love. Love. What you see going on around the world is nothing but selfishness. Nothing but me. It's the me syndrome. It's me, 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 me. What about you? When it becomes about you, you're nothing but selfish. Nothing but selfish. But I'm telling you, when your heart's right with God, you look for, long for, what can I do, Lord, to show people how good you are to me? Let me share the blessings that you give me. Let me spread it around. I want you to see, folks, how good God's been to me. And I want to share that with you so you can go forth and tell people how good God's with you. You see, God puts people in my life that are a blessing to me. My life is the result of not only the grace of God, but every person that contributed to me. I have resulted from that. And oh, thank God they wasn't selfish. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for the Sunday school teacher. Thank God for a mom and dad. Thank God for friends. Thank God for the people that I've encountered down through life that have contributed to me and taught me how they shared the grace of God with me and how they shared with me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says you cannot grow. You cannot grow. Let me show you what covetousness could do. And it still does it today, even though it's spiritually and not physically is out. Ananias and Sapphira, they received a greater portion of God's blessing than they thought. And the selfishness took over and, and they lied to God. Now, they could have kept it all. But when they said, we're going to give it all, God holds you to the word. And when you got saved, you said, Lord, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. Therefore, I want to glorify God in my body. Now, you make that commitment. And if you make that commitment, that life belongs to God. And he has a right to correct it or punishment instituted upon it if they go back. 
Ananias and Sapphira covetously lied to the Lord and they lost their life. Well, let me say to you now, uh, more than likely it's not going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you your spiritual life. You know what I found out? A lot of bitter, resentful, self-righteous, judgmental people who claim to be Christians. And you get mad at me, but it's true. You'll find out eventually it's because they've got a selfish spirit. They've got a selfish spirit. Somewhere they didn't get what they thought they ought to God. Somewhere they're not recognized like they ought to be recognized. But what did Jesus said? Made himself of no reputation. You're not in it for recognition, patting on the back and telling them how wonderful you are. And that's all right to pass acclimates. But if you're doing it for that, you're going to find one day that patting on the back is going to stop. And people are going to quit allotting you. And then you're going to crash. You're going to crash. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You, you have the greatest privilege in the world, and that is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Notice in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The purpose of spiritual gifts is to serve Jesus Christ. I see a lot of these preachers bragging on, I've got these spiritual gifts. Well, that's all the reward. If they do, they're getting for it because spiritual gifts were to glorify God. They were to glorify God. You were to use them for that, not to laud yourself and to build yourself up. And then in closing, Colossians 3, 23 and 24, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. Put your heart in it. And do it because Jesus is in your heart and because he's the love of your life and not for the pat on the back of men. Oh, you know, I have met people that are so hungry for, for recognition that it literally destroys their effectiveness in ministry. It causes them to make bad decisions and it causes them not to have the loyalty that they ought to have because they're so hungry. Let God recognize you. Let God recognize you. Know what he said. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. God is keeping the record that he'll reward you according to that which was genuine. Now, it doesn't hurt to say, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for that message. Thank you for that witness. But don't feast upon that. You're not waiting to be recognized in the sense Boy, I'm getting the job done. No, without the Holy Spirit, the Bible said, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. In the Old Testament, it said, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. How dare us to steal the glory and, speak, and, and misuse the power of God for self-gratification. Let's lift up Jesus. Let's lift up Jesus. Let's point people to Jesus. Let's tell him, I am what I am by the grace of God. All that I have is the gift of God. All good things come down from heaven. From the Father. Without God, I'm nothing. Without Christ, I'm powerless. Believer, if you've not served Jesus, you're not serving Jesus, rededicate your life and make a commitment. And if you have been Eat up with that self-glorification. Confess it as a sin and say, Lord, give me victory over that. I want my heart to belong to you and I want whatever I do you to get the glory. And then in closing, dear one, under my sound today, if you've not trusted Christ as personal Savior, please, please listen to me. Please confess that you're a sinner. Ask God to forgive you. Trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Something like this, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I acknowledge my sin. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And I want to trust you as my Savior, my payment for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for resurrecting to become the first fruits of the resurrection. And one morning because of that, as I trust you, I'll be resurrected. 
For I ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake I pray. I trust and pray. Christian, you be honest about your service to God. An unsaved person, you trust Jesus as your personal Savior. Father, anoint the message. Give it understanding and application to everybody that listened to it. Receive the glory and the honor by lifting up Christ and by granting to the Holy Spirit that necessary information that he can work in these lives. Thank you for letting us serve you. And may we continue, as Paul said, finish our mission and keep the faith. And we'll pray, praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Till we meet again, may God richly bless you is our prayer. Amen.